Hey, what's happening gang? Welcome to your seventh Vue.js tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about keyboard events. Okay, so in the last couple of tutorials we've been taking a look at events and specifically we've been looking at mouse events. So things like on click, on double click, on mouse move, stuff like that. Now I want to move on to keyboard events. So we have access to events like key down, key press and key up. And I want to take a look at those events and some keyboard event modifiers in this tutorial. So if we go back to the code, you can see what I've done is I've got a couple of labels, one for name, one for age, and then two text input fields as well. So we're going to listen out for events on these two fields. And the events I want to listen for are the key up events. So when someone uh, types in a letter into one of these input fields, when they type that on the keyboard, when the key comes up, then that is the event. It's going to listen for that event, right? And then do something. It's going to react to it. So let's just add those events on as we normally would by saying v hyphen on colon and then the event name, which is going to be key up, right? So that then is going to be equal to something and probably going to be equal to some kind of function that we're going to define on our view instance. And we'll do that in a second. For now, let's add it to that one as well. So let's just give these functions that we want to fire a name. I'll call this one log name because that's where we're going to insert our name. And here we'll say log age. OK, so now when we do a key up event on this input field, it's going to find this function on the instance right here, the view instance and fire it likewise with this input field as well. So I'm going to do two very simple methods in this method object right here. And uh, the first one is log name. And that's going to be a function. And all this is going to do is log a very simple message to the console to say that we've logged, that we've entered something into this input field. So we'll say console.log. You entered your name, right? And then we'll do something very similar for the log age method as well. So let's copy that and paste it underneath and call this one log age and change this to age as well. OK, so this should all work when we type something in here on the key up event. It's going to listen for that and fire one of these two functions, right? So let's check it out now in a browser. So we'll need the console open. So I'm just going to inspect the element and go to console. And if I type something in age, then you can see down here you entered your name and it's going to do that every time I type something in. OK, so if I type any letter in here, it's going to fire that every time I type something in, every time there's a key up event. OK, now that's fine. But what if we don't want this to output every single time? What if, for example, we want the user to input the name and then when they're done, they can click enter. Right. And when they click enter, then we fire this function. Right. So not every time there's a key up event, just when they click enter, after a key up event. So we can do that by adding on a modifier, much like we added on modifiers for the mouse events. We can add them on here as well. So this modifier is going to be called enter, right? And I'll do the same one for this enter and I'm going to save that. Now you can see nothing in the console at the minute. Now when I type in Sean, you can see nothing is being output here to the console just yet. But now I've typed it. If I click enter, now we get it. Right now we've entered our name and I can do the same for this 27, then click enter. You entered your age. All right. So now if I refresh this and go in here and press enter, we still get you entered your name because that in itself is a key up event, right? The enter, the enter button. Now I want to show you one more thing. We can tack on together. We can chain them together, these different modifiers. So say, for example, I want the user to hold down alt and enter, right? And then only that works. So we can say dot alt dot enter. And then that is only going to fire this function after a key up event when we hold alt and enter. So check this out. If now I come in here, I'll just refresh it and I'll say 27. And if I click enter, we get entered your age. OK, did we save it? No, we didn't save it. That's why. So come over here now. 27. Click enter. Nothing happens. Hit alt and enter now. Now we get you entered your age so we can tack these on together. We can chain them together to give you the desired effect. 
and there's a few different modifiers we can use for key events. You can read more about them here. You can see right here we've got enter. Where did I use? Alt is down here somewhere. Okay, Alt isn't there, but we can use Alt as well. Uh, tab, delete, escape, space. There's a list of these here. You can come and read more about them. Um, really easy to understand and self-explanatory, but it gives you a lot of flexibility in listening for these events. And I suppose a really good example would be if you have a form and you're hitting tab to cycle through the different form fields, then every time you hit tab, you're listening for a key up event or something like that, you can fire some code, right? So all in all, really cool and very flexible.